Here's the point. If the last days begun at the time of Pentecost over 2,000 years ago, how much closer are we to the coming of Christ now? How much closer is Jesus now than 2,000 years ago? Brothers and sisters, we are on the brink of the return of Christ. And we should not be getting so comfortable in these last days. We should be paying attention to our lives, making sure that we're walking faithfully so that that hour does not catch us by surprise. If you're a Christian and you don't realize right now, if you don't have that sense that Christ can come, that imminence of Christ's return, then I would say that there's something wrong with you because even non-believers are looking at the world and saying there's something wrong. Something doesn't feel right. How much more should the Christian who has the Holy Spirit should be aware of the things that are happening and going on? We as Christians should have the answer. We as Christians should not be caught by surprise because we have the truth. God has told us so that when they do happen, instead of losing faith, instead of becoming fearful, become bold in our faith and knowing that God has spoken it and that we can trust him. We are closer to the coming of Christ than ever. And we ought to be alert. And the next thing that the Apostle John mentions, and he says, emphasizes that it's the last hour, and he says, as you have heard, the Antichrist is coming, and even now many Antichrists have come. But one of the interesting things here is that he mentions Antichrist and Antichrists with an S. Antichrist in singular and Antichrists in plural. So there, he's addressing two specific different things, and although they're connected, it's important to understand the difference. When he speaks about Antichrist in a singular, he's speaking this name as a specific title of this specific person who will be used by Satan and at an appointed time to deceive many. And, and it's a very important doctrine for us to understand because the Scripture gives a lot of information regarding this individual. And it is one of the titles that is used for this person. But there's many titles that the Bible uses of this coming leader that we should also be aware of and that allow us to understand the impact that this individual will have in the world. Just to name a, a few names that we see in the Scriptures in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, he is also called the man of sin. And in that same verse, he is also called the son of perdition. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 8, he's called the little horn. In Daniel chapter 9, verse 26, he's called the prince that shall come. And this man will be used by the devil to bring destruction to many. In fact, when, when we look in the Bible, there's many individuals in the Bible that are used as a type of this world leader that will come and will cause the whole world to rebel against God, will cause all the nations to bow down to Satan. We see that in Nimrod, who was the first global leader that united all the different nations to come and rebel against God. We see that in the Babylonian Empire, in Nebuchadnezzar, who causes um, people to come and worship an idol, the idol, or, or else they get thrown into the furnace. There are many individuals in the Bible that typify this individual. And when we look at uh, this name, Antichrist, it doesn't just mean someone that is against Christ, but it specifically means someone who is in place of Christ. Someone who wants to usurp the authority that belongs to Christ and Christ alone. And that's why not only is it used here, Antichrist, as a, a specific person, specific individual who will be on this earth at a specific time in history, but also about people who refuse to give Christ his authority. And one of the things that we see about this individual, when we look 
and we study some of the things that he comes to do, we see that he seems to want to counterfeit Jesus. He wants to make people believe that he is the Messiah. In fact, we see certain similarities. One of the things we see about that the scripture tells us that when he comes, when the Antichrist is given power to establish his kingdom on earth, the scripture tells us that it's going to be specifically for three and a half years, which is very close or approximate the same amount of time where Jesus had his ministry, which is about three years, three, three and a half years. We see that he will come and he will proclaim himself to be God. In fact, we see that in Second Thessalonians is actually one of the books that gives us a lot of information about this individual. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4, the scripture says, Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So this individual wants to be worshipped. He will proclaim himself to be God. And when we, we look at this, this is the very nature of Satan. When we read in the book of Isaiah of what uh, Satan says about himself or what, about what he desires, to be like God, to be like the Most High, we see the same nature and quality in this coming leader. In fact, I believe that he might even have a false resurrection to fool many. When we look at the scriptures in the book of Revelation, it says that it's uh, everybody marveled at the beast after he was recovered from the wound. They marveled that he was back to life. In the book of uh, Revelation 13.3, the scripture says, And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. So there's something is going to happen, something great, something miraculous and deceitful will cause the world to believe that this man is who he says he is, to make them believe that he is Jesus or that he is God. And that's why, brothers and sisters, the, the scripture tells us that especially in these days, we need to hold on to the word of God. This is not a time to be experimenting. This is not a time to stray away from the anchor that God has given us. Because the enemy is out to deceive. The enemy is out to destroy. And the Bible says that even the very elect could be deceived. If it be possible, even the elect. That's why we need to be watching diligently. What are some characteristics of this person? What, is, what are some characteristics of this person that the Bible calls the Antichrist? And, and one of the things we see is that when we do a study on this, we see that the characteristics that are possessed by this man are possessed by many of these leaders that have risen up, many of these despots, many of these tyrants, because it is that same spirit of rebellion against God. In the book of, uh, of Revelation chapter 13, verse 5, and Daniel chapter 7, verse 8, the Bible shows us as this Antichrist, he speaks great things. He is a charismatic speaker. He is a convincing speaker, and he openly blasphemes God. And one of the things, brothers and sisters, that we have to be so careful of is that when we listen to preachers, when we listen to teachers of the Word of God or those that call themselves that, to not be fooled by the way they preach, to not be fooled by whether they're outgoing or not, because this antichrist, this deceiver, will be a man that will be able to deliver speeches and cause people to be inspired, to be touched, 
That's why we are, when we are listening to preachers, we're looking to see if the word of God is in his mouth. Not if it makes me feel good, because some of the false preachers that exist in these times are excellent speakers. We look at Hitler. People were mesmerized during his long speeches. Do not be fooled by the way a person speaks. According to Daniel 11.37, the Bible shows us that this Antichrist, it says he would not have desire for women. He will not have desire for women. Is it possible that this whole agenda, this whole emphasis on homosexuality, this feminization of men is part of that antichrist system? Because it's not just a man. It's a system. Because that man will be the epitome of that system, will be the the personification of that system. But that system will not only exist in that man, he will make sure that it's accepted by the world. And brothers and sisters, when we look at homosexuality, not even just not even speaking from the point where God says that it's wrong, that it's an abomination, but even studies have come out saying that it is not healthy, it is not good, it is not natural. And we as Christians also have to be careful in the way that we deal with this because um, there is a recent study that came out saying that there's absolutely no proof that men and women are born homosexuals. And when you actually look into statistics of many people that practice homosexuality, a lot of them have been abused. A lot of them have suffered some kind of traumatic experience. They're hurt. They're wounded. So we as Christians also have to be careful the way we approach this and trying to understand that there's something in the life of this person that caused them to be this way. But nevertheless, we're living in a time where there is a system that is being pushed, an agenda that is being brought, that, that is being pushed on Christians to accept that this is normal when it's not. It's part of this antichrist agenda. Brothers and sisters, let's not be fooled. It's all in the Word. It's all in the Word of God. There's a lot of Christians that are being caught up in this system that is rising, and it's because they don't know the Word. Let's, let's get into the Word of God. Let's see what He says and not get caught off guard. Amen. I would like to read that scripture again that uh, Pastor Javer just read, and perhaps a little bit more. Verse 18, dear children, this is the last hour. As you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists has come. Brothers and sisters, a lot of us are looking for the Antichrist in different areas. But as we look closer and closer and closer to what's going on within our churches, we can see the work of Satan. For example, when the Antichrist first appears in the world, we see it in Ezekiel chapter 38 as a peacemaker. And what are we seeing today in our churches? We're seeing churches telling people that now we need to be united with false religions, be in peace with them, and in harmony they offer us peace when in reality that is not what's happening. In Revelation 2, he appears as the white horse giving a resemblance of purity when in reality he is not. And in Revelation 6, 2, he is revealed standing in the temple. Brothers and sisters, the devil is looking for positions to be able to change the word of God, to be able to control the minds of the people. And just like Pastor Javer said, through his eloquent speeches, lure people to a lie. That's why it continues to say this. This is how we know it is the last hour. They went out from us. And these are people that perhaps started in the right direction. But they did not really belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. 
but their going showed that none of them belonged.